Right, folks, I thought I'd make a little short video showing you the new update. So uh, we've got the BIM interoperability tools that have updated. So if you go to manage.autodesk.com on your own machine, so this is you from home, obviously, you will see uh, all product updates that are here. And then from product updates, just waiting and it loading up for me. Right, a little search button. It's up here, so not this one up here, export to CSV. You want a little magnifying glass. And then within there, we'll do BIM interoperability. There you go. So you'll notice BIM interoperability tools for Revit 22 is now 9.08119. It's there and it is quite a difference. If you download it and install it at home, it will update it. However, if you go to Revit and you click on BIM interoperability tools and about, it will give you a version. Now this morning I had version eight and it looks like the video that I've sent you all. What you'll notice with this version nine is that it's going to appear different here. It's not the classification manager. So I have spoken to the other hosts and we'll let you know at your centre. So those at New College Lanarkshire will definitely be using this one, the new one. Um, if it's the old one, you won't be disadvantaged. There's, I'll show you the differences here. As long as we know before it, I would actually, if you upload and update yours at home, then you can't really roll it back. So don't update it until you hear back from us that the host centre Birmingham, Belfast, Oxford, Brooks, etc., are definitely going to be using this. Um, I'll tell you when I find it. So right now, we can ignore that button entirely, like this. What you were doing before was you were picking Uniclass, and then you were importing Kobe, and then you were going to assign. It's still the same, it's just a different place, that's it. So if I click on Assign Classification, uh, what you will notice is this first little slider you need to tick Kobe, which we always did, but it was just in a different place. When you load it the first time, all of these might be ticked, and that's what all of these symbols are. There's NBS uh, or Uniclass, then we've got Omniclass, Uniformat, and so on. We don't actually want any of them. We only want uh, Uniclass 2015. Now, you can download that, and you can go and find it. We're just going to use the default in the competition, no matter whether you're using this method or the other method, it doesn't matter. I'm making sure that the code exists in both, don't worry. Any code you're expected to use will exist in both. So we're just picking that as Uniclass. If you go here to the Uniclass little symbol, you'll see they all pop in. Okay. Now what you can do is you typically have to click on load it. So let me just take this away. And then we'll just start new and it's a construction template, it doesn't matter um, for this purposes. If I'll just draw any type of wall in there just now, and we'll just put it in, there we go. So when I go to BIM Interoperability Tools, I'm clicking on the Assign Classification button now. Okay, we can see here it's Uniclass, Kobe is ticked. Okay, and then here, if it pops up with Load the Table, right, you just click Load, and what it will do is it's going to load all the tables here that are clicked on. Right, so I've just reloaded my Revit, so I'm back to the same stage you all will be if it's the first time you're loading it. So I have just drawn in this little basic wall. So it's back to here. So instead of set up and selecting the table, we're going to go to Assign. And then here, you'll notice we've got uh, Kobe, which I need to tick. And we'll do that when we're actually assigning, and Uniclass has been selected as the table. So here's the Uniclass 2015, and it does say click here to load. No database is yet loaded. Clicking on it will do all the work for you. It goes to Autodesk's BIM Interoperability Tools website, and it downloads the latest table. So obviously, when we're in here, we're looking at, if I click close at this point, that's as normally what we would do with setup, and then we go to import. So instead of going to set up and choosing it, we're going to assign. Uh, yeah, make sure Kobe's there, Uniclass is there, and click Load Tables. So that's fine. We've set it up. Import and use Browse and find the Kobe export that I've provided for you. Still the same. Exact, this is exactly the same, this part. So we'll just say OK to that. 
and whatever options we're asked to select, and I'll just say import to that. And it means now I'm able to assign using the assign button. So the only button that's really replaced is setup. So if we just do set up slightly differently, that's it. So if I go back to my 3D view even in here and I click in the blank space and say assign uh, its facility, which table am I using? So instead of being tabbed, it's now within a little drop down. And it's, let's say, entity and it's education, or oh, I misspelled it, if we spell it right, education entities, and we'll just say assign to that. Making sure the first time, obviously, that Kobe selected exactly the same as we've done before. So this is just a slight user interface change. Instead of being tabs, it's now all a little drop down here. That's it. And close. And if you pick an element and go to assign, uh, it's again the same, it's on element. But this time, is it EF table, PR table, or SS table? Okay, so in this case, it could be walls. You could be told to choose walls 25, 10, or whatever, and assign them. All right, so no major differences, but I'm sure it helps actually being able to see somebody else use it. No setup classification, it's now all done within the one button assigned.